Hello, this video is seven questions to review for what we've done so far in high school math prep, starting with equations. Please pause the video, try the questions, and then you may watch the solutions. For this one, we're just writing an expression, the product of five and a number decreased by three. Product means to multiply. We're going to take five and our number, and then we're going to subtract from it. So we're going to have 5n or 5x decreased by 3, 5n minus 3. Here you have an inequality that involves some distributing. You also have a number line provided so that you may graph this inequality when you've found the solution. Step one here is to distribute to remove brackets. We're going to be multiplying here over on the left hand side of the inequality by negative 6. This will give us negative 1 minus 12x is greater than or equals 2. And then we're going to go ahead and distribute over on the right hand side. That will leave us with 12x minus 6 plus 2x. We can collect like terms over on the right hand side before starting to move and collect across the inequality. So this will be 14x minus 6. And then on the left hand side, we're going to have the same as what we had before, negative 6 minus 12x. Remember for inequalities, we want to move the variable to the left. So we have a 14x that we can move by subtraction going to minus 14x, that will cancel, and we're going to minus 14x over on the left hand side. Negative 12x minus 14x is a negative 26x. I'm going to copy down the constants, copy my inequality, and my next step is to move the negative 6 over on the left over to the right collecting the constants. That's a negative 6, so we're going to add 6. That will cancel, and we will add 6 over on the right-hand side. That gives us negative 26x is greater than or equal to negative 6 plus 6, which is 0. At this point, we're going to finally isolate x through division of a negative, which means our inequality symbol is going to switch directions. We're going to divide by negative 26 on both sides, and 0 divided by negative 26 is 0. So our solution is going to be x, and then the inequality goes the other way. It's less than or equal to 0. When we are graphing, we're going to find 0 on our number line. We're going to put a closed dot here because the inequality is less than or equals to. So we're going to put a, a full dot there. And then our inequality, the pointy end is facing to the left. x has to be either 0 or less than 0. So our inequality is going to show us a graphing line going leftwards to our smaller integers. For this graphing question, you're going to create the equation based on the table of values. And remember that in our master equation, y is equal to mx plus b, m is our slope, and our slope is calculated by the change in y over the change in x, and b is our y-intercept, or what we would call the bridge when creating the equation. First up, we take a look at the table of values and see the patterns for x and y. y is going with a plus 1 pattern, and so is x. And so our slope, the change in y, is a plus 1 pattern, and the change in x is a plus 1 pattern. So our slope is very basic. It's going to be a positive 1 still. So y is equal to just x, or you can label it as 1x. And then we try that. We're going to multiply x by 1 to see if we are indeed at y. 1 times 1 is only 1, so we need to bridge up to 2. So that's going to be a plus 1 there. We can try it with another value. 4 times 1 is 4, 
So yes, the pattern is consistent. We're going to need a plus one bridge. And so the equation of the line here is going to be y is equal to x plus one, where the slope is a positive one, so it'll be a rising graph, and the y-intercept will cross the y-axis at a positive one. For this next one, you're going to fill in the missing values for y. You're going to create the equation, and then I'd like you to think about the slope. Is it a rising or a falling graph? What is the y-intercept? Where would it be crossing the y-axis? So we can see for the y, we have a consistent pattern. It's a plus 5 pattern. So we can easily fill in this pattern in our table of values. So it's a plus 5 pattern. And for x, we're just going up by 1. So when we're calculating our slope, the change in y over the change in x, this is going to be very straightforward because our x value is only going up by 1. So our slope is 5. So we can build our equation now. y is equal to 5x, and then we try that. We multiply the x's by 5. When we do that, we see that we indeed get right to y. There is no bridge required, and we can try this for any two values on the table just to be sure. And so our equation is y is equal to 5x. This would be a rising graph as the slope is positive. And because there is no bridge, this means that the y-intercept is right on the point of origin, right at 0, 0. Now you can try one more. Create the equation. Think about the slope and what the graph would look like. Think about the y-intercept based on the equation that you built. So let's take a look at the patterns. For y, we can see we're going down by 1. And for x, we can see that we're going up by 2. Sometimes with the negative values, it's a little harder to see that. But you can see on the positive values, very clear, 0, 2, 4. And that makes sense. So we're going a plus 2 pattern here for x. Now we're going to calculate our slope, the change in y over the change in x. So our slope is going to be a negative 1 over a positive 2. So our slope is a negative half. So y is equal to negative half x. And then we're going to try that. Now you can convert to a decimal, whatever you want to do. I actually encourage you to use the zero value as your starting point, because anything multiplied by zero is just zero, and then you can easily find your bridge. So zero multiplied by a negative half is still just zero, and we have to get up to a positive 2. And so that means we need a plus 2 bridge. And again, I could try this on any value I want. So I could go ahead and multiply now a negative value, 4 times a negative half. That's half of 4, and it's going to become positive. It's going to become a positive 2, and I need a plus 2 bridge. So I can see that that works for a couple of the values. So my bridge is a plus 2. In terms of how a graph would look, this would be a falling slope because the slope is negative, And it would cross the y-axis at a positive 2. As we've discussed, surface area takes a lot of practice. Give this one a try, accounting for the area of each and every side. Add them all together, and then you'll have your surface area in square centimeters. For the solution for the surface area, we need to keep in mind that we have two trapezoids as the basis. So we need the trapezoid formula height multiplied to the two bases added to each other, um, the two parallel sides, forgive me, divided by 2. So I've labeled each figure showing that I've pulled it out so I pull out the trapezoids, so we've got 6 and 12 as our parallel sides and 4 as the height, and we're going to have two of those trapezoids. We've got a top that is 5, sorry, we've got sides that are 5 by 10, two of those. We've got a top that is 10 by 6, and a bottom 
that is 12 by 10. Once we have that, we can calculate the area of this trapezoid. We can do all of our formulas, and then we can go ahead and we can add up our values, and in the end we'll have 352 square centimeters. The last question is polynomials division. Remember how to divide fractions. You keep, change, and flip. Here we're not solving for x or y, we're simplifying. So you can keep, change, flip your fractions, simplify the coefficients, and then you're going to be either adding and subtracting your exponents. So you can give this one a try and see what you remember on the polynomials. Okay, so here I'm showing you the step where I flipped the second fraction and I changed division to multiplication. And now I'm going to look to cross reduce my fractions. So with 16 and 6, I'm going to divide by 2. Oops, that's a 3 down there. Forgive me. That's going to be an 8 up there. And then on the other diagonal, I'm going to divide by 3. And now I'm going to simplify my numerators, my denominators, and then see if I can further simplify. So I'm going to multiply across negative 8 times negative 5 is a positive 40. x to the power of 3 multiplied by x to the power of 1 means I add my exponents. This is x to the power of 4. y to the power of 1 multiplied to y to the power of 4. Add those exponents, y to the power of 5. On the denominator, 1 times 3 is 3. We have y to the power of 3 multiplied to y to the power of 1, and we have an x in there. So the x gets brought along, and we'll have y to the power of 4. In terms of our coefficients, these are fully simplified, so we can just write it as a fraction. 40 over 3, and now we can use quotient law. We're dividing our variables, so we're subtracting our exponents. 4 minus 1 is x to the power of 3, and 5 minus 4 is y to the power of 1. Our final answer is 40 over 3 x cubed y. And there you are, you're one step closer to writing your high school math prep final exam.